Hi everyone, it's David Mood here from Studio One Expert. I'd like to show you my favorite feature of FabFilters Pro Q2, namely its solo mode. But before I do just that, let's make use of one of its other very nice features, the full screen mode, which is of course just what the doctor ordered for this video. Now, what is the solo mode and what can it do? We can access the solo mode if we create one band by just double clicking anywhere with this maybe unimpressive looking small headphone icon. Now, if you're already a user of Pro-Q2 and thought of this maybe just like as a nice gimmick until now, hopefully I can show you how incredibly useful it can be for various different purposes. So let me play an acoustic guitar track I have prepared. So if we click now the headphone icon, we now just hear the frequency band between the vertical lines. If we hold down Ctrl and drag the mouse down, we can make the band narrower. If we drag it up, we can make it broader. Okay, fine, so this is how it works. Now, how can we use this? Let's delete this band for now. One of the main applications I use it for all the time is setting a high pass filter. Now, to create a high pass filter, we just need to double click anywhere in this region of the interface, and then Pro Q2 knows that we want to have a high pass filter. Now, I can imagine mainly two possible scenarios when I would want to use a high pass filter on this guitar. The first one would be if this would be like a very sparse track, you know, maybe with just this one guitar and the singer, then I'd probably want to leave the guitar completely intact and just remove some low frequency rumble that might be there, you know, from traffic or air condition or anything like that. So in this case, I don't want to remove anything from the instrument itself. So in this case, I probably use a very steep slope. We could even use the steepest slope there is. It's almost like a brick wall filter. Let's start the guitar track. And now all we have to do is move this up, of course, in solo mode. Move this up until we hear just a little bit of the guitar. There it is. You can slowly hear the bass now. So let's move it a little bit back until we don't hear the guitar at all. about there. Let's bypass the band. Activate. As you can hear, it sounds pretty much the same, but we removed, you know, any low frequency rumble that might be there. Now this would be the first scenario. The second one would be, you know, if this guitar would be in a dance mix, like with tons of other guitars and keyboards and vocals, background vocals, drums, bass, and whatnot, then I might want to uh, remove much more of the low end, because usually the bass would play anyway the part which is down there. So in this case, I would use a gentle slope, maybe 10 dB per octave. Let's play the guitar again. Go into solo mode. And now let's see how far we can go until maybe it's a little bit too much. So this is clearly only based what we have now. We don't need this in a dance mix. But there a little bit more we can hear now from the real tonality of the guitar. And that's obviously too much. So I would probably set it somewhere around here. Let's bypass it. You can hear we really remove this, uh, basically the bass, the bass part of the guitar. Yeah. Sounds much cleaner and would fit probably much better into a full mix. Okay, let's remove this band for now. And let me show you another application where the solo mode is incredibly useful, which would be removing problematic frequencies from a track. You've probably heard of the sweeping technique, which many engineers use, and maybe you use it yourself, where you create a band and boost it a lot, make a narrower cue, and then you sweep around and look for the frequency which sounds bad, and then remove it. Now this is fine, and many engineers have used this for decades, 
The only problem is that you need experience for this technique, because quite frankly, if you boost the crap out of any frequency, it will always sound bad. I can see many videos on YouTube, you know, where somebody goes like this, boost something, then makes an arrow cue, makes an arrow cue and plays the track, and says, ah, sounds like shit, let's remove it. Then you boost somewhere else, oh, sounds like crap, let's remove it. Let's find another problematic frequency. Ah, this sounds unpleasant, let's remove it. And so on and so on, you get the idea. So let's delete all these bands. And let me show you how to use the solo mode for this purpose. So let's create a band and set the cue maybe to be around half of an octave. Here between the 100 and the 200 vertical line is easy to do because this is exactly one octave. So maybe like this would be like half an octave. And now let's enter solo mode and let's look for a problematic frequency. Nothing wrong up there. That's okay. Oh, can you hear that? That's right singing. Now this is a resonant frequency which we should remove. That's fine. That's okay. So let's go back. It's around 440 Hz, so there's probably an A which is causing the problems. So let's reduce it. Right past it. Can you hear it? This is actually sounding so annoying that I think that we could even create a notch filter, which we can do by clicking here uh, on the bottom of the screen. Then we get automatic notch filter. And let's listen again. And there it is. Without. So I hope you can hear, we didn't really change the sound of the guitar, but we got rid of this uh, very annoying ringing resonant frequency. And this is exactly what we want. The solo mode helps us to easier hear what is really a problematic frequency and what sounds just bad because we boosted it like by 12 dB. And you know, of course you can still work with the sweeping technique, but you, as I said, you need experience to know when it's sounding really bad or when it's just because of the boost. And obviously many beginners uh, don't have this experience. So this is really a big help for this. Another great use for the solo mode is ear training. Let's remove this band. And you know, take a song that is recorded and mixed very well, load it into your DAW, play it. Create a band, go into solo mode, press control and choose around one octave. Again, like between the 100 and 200 lines, it's easy to do. It's exactly one octave. Let go of control. And then, you know, let's go down here and just sweep up slowly. And, you know, just listen for how does the octave in the bass sound, how does it sound in the mid range, in the high mids, and so on. So let's go up. You know, there is nothing down there, basically. Here we start to hear the bass drum. You can only hear this if you have a subwoofer or good headphones or full range monitors. Here is like the meat of the kick drum. You know, it's also nice hearing where is the bass and where is the kick drum. Is the bass above the kick or is the bass below the kick? In this case, obviously, we can first hear the, the bass drum and if we now move up, There we can hear the bass guitar. Let's go up. We 
we can start to hear the guitars. Which obviously were quite high passed, like I did before, because we didn't hear them until like about here. And luckily we can hear the singer. Now we actually understand what he sings. It's very interesting, you know, to take different mixes and to see where you can go to really hear uh, what the singer is singing, which also gives you a clue where they probably boosted the most on the vocals. And here it seems to be around uh, 1.5 kilohertz. Here we have the presence area. And as we move up and up, we go to the air territory. And then finally between 20 and 20k, there's not a lot of stuff going on there, as you can hear. We can hear a little bit of the tambourine. Okay, you get the idea. So, if you have the FabFilter Pro Q2, try to use the solo mode for these purposes and I think you will find that it's incredibly useful. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. I've been David. Bye-bye.